Last episode, we started our 125cc four-stroke drift cart for the first time. And it actually ran surprisingly well straight out of the box. That sounds absolutely ridiculous. This thing started life as a kid's quad bike and it's come such a long way since then. But the aim is to take this thing for its first ride before Christmas day. That means we've only got four days to get this thing into a condition where I can actually jump on and thrash it. So we've definitely got our work cut out for us. We are now in day eight of the 12 days of Mikemas where we're doing daily vlogs every single day right up until Christmas and doing giveaways in every single video. Last video, I literally have no idea 8408, oh that's a bit of a mouthful, won the two step garage pack. Thank you to everyone who left a comment you guys are all freaking amazing and in this video i'm giving away a 50 dollar auto barn voucher but unfortunately it's only valid for australian residents so sorry to everyone outside australia but if you're in australia you can win this all you have to do comment on the video let me know your thoughts and feelings about how the cart's going or your life or just anything in general good luck now we've got some work to do on this freaking cart so there is quite a list of jobs to get done on this thing like we always say the last 10 percent takes 90 percent of the time it's all the little fiddly things so we have to hook up the chain to the rear axle this sprocket is from the 50 cc motor and it's just not going to work for us because look how much larger the teeth are on the sprocket from the motor so I went out and I got us the right sprocket for the job but unfortunately it is not the right bolt pattern because this is the kids quad bike rear axle and this is from a big buggy so we're gonna pull this apart and figure out how we can make it work which will include some cutting and some welding from this to this of course because it's spinning in a circle we need to make sure it is perfect so it's not wobbling around everywhere which is not going to be easy then we've got our foot plates which need to be welded onto the frame this is actually gonna add some more strength to our frame just by welding these to it. But I need to make sure that they're in the exact perfect position so that the wheels don't hit it when we're on lock. Then we need to make the pedals so that we can use the clutch, the brake, the throttle. And lastly, we need to make a shift lever. Just quietly, that is one of the things that I'm most looking forward to out of anything. Shifting through the gears on this thing is gonna be so damn fun with the sequential fricking. It's gonna be so good. First job we're gonna do is we're gonna weld these foot plates onto the frame. Let's get to fricking work. You. I did not realize how much those foot plates would complete the look of the whole cart, but look at that. They look freaking sweet. So effectively the frame is now complete. Although what we'll likely end up doing is making a bar that goes from here down to here. And I'll have it on tab so that we can unbolt it so that we can still remove the motor. It'll be like little bolt and side intrusions from a roll cage, but on our tiny wee drift cart, which will be pretty cool. Look how low this thing is, by the way. I might have gone a little bit too far with it, so hopefully we don't get too much flex when we're sitting on it. But it looks awesome. <laughs> so next job on the list, we're gonna tackle the chain and the chain sprocket. They call this biting the head off the frog. It's doing the job that you least want to do straight away just to get it out of the way. This is the job I least want to do, so we're gonna bite the head off the frog right now. Let's pull the rear axle out, pull the sprocket off, and make this freaking thing happen. I just found these twin tips in our scrap bin. Imagine that. Hell yes. You know we're doing blast pipes. That is gonna be so good. All right, enough getting distracted. Let's actually do the axle now. <laughs> So we have our chain sprocket off sitting here on the bench and we've been doing fancy measurement vernier things. I call it fancy, you guys are probably just like, dude, that is literally normal. But for me, just fancy. So I've got marks around all four corners, well they're not corners, they've got bends on them, but four things. And then it's sitting right now perfectly centered on the other sprockets. Then what I'm gonna do is tack this sprocket on and then we'll cut this off around the four corners and essentially this will become one sprocket, which is kind of confusing probably. And then on the other side, there's holes in the sprocket. So I'm gonna weld those holes and do the final welds and then that'll be like our sprocket nice and done. But obviously the one thing we've gotta be considerate of is that we don't wanna warp the sprocket with heat. So we've gotta take it easy, take our time. <sighs> It's, it's maths and it's thinking and it hurts my tiny little peanut brain, but we are getting there So let's go ahead grind this down and then these two should just fit together beautifully Then we can sort out our chain and technically then we'll have drive to the rear wheels, which is actually pretty exciting So the way that we check whether this is perfectly center slip it back over Set it nicely on the lip right here. And then we get a ruler. We measure from the center out to the outside here we check this, so this is 75 mil to the tooth, perfect. Okay. We rotate it some, 75 mil to the tooth, perfect. It's the same the whole way around. Not bad. That's crazy. Not bad for Mikey. That's pretty good. So here is our 
final sprocket all done. Time to go onto our axles. Booyah, our rear axle is all finished and now we're on to fitting the chain. So our chain is far too long. I bought this brand new. Luckily, we can shorten it. So it's got a removable link that we've removed right here. We're now marking the length with a bit of slack because this has the ability to pull back with these slots here. So tension up the chain. Oh, look at that, that's crazy. So now we're gonna mark it here, remove that link. You gotta punch that. So you punch it out. With our SP Tools punch, shout out SP Tools. And then we're gonna have the correct length chain and then we'll have drive to the rear wheels. So good. Hey! So you gotta be careful. Chain! Be careful when you're punching him out, you don't wanna spread that, because then the roll will drop out, roll away, and you never see it again. So we officially have drive on the death car. Check that out. How freaking good! So sick. That was the one big hurdle I think that was gonna stop us from officially driving this thing before Christmas. I'm very confident now that we can get that done. Now that we have drive to our rear wheels, the next thing I wanna do is make our new clutch pedal. Now the clutch is gonna be a little more complicated to figure out. So here's the clutch cable, hooks up right here. It's gonna go over the top, but then we're gonna go underneath and it's gonna pop up because of the way that we have to make our pedal so that it actually pulls the cable. So it's gonna be kinda complicated. What I'm gonna do is whip off this plate and start to devise a plan on how we're gonna do the pedal. But we're gonna have to make it from scratch, which is gonna be the hardest thing. But I do have an idea up here of how we're gonna do it. So uh, let's get to work. So I've whipped up this funky little clutch pedal that you see right here. It's all still a work in progress because I'm kind of testing to see whether it's actually gonna work. So I've got two tabs here just tacked on to the frame. Ignore the way it looks at the moment. I'll round off all the corners and shave it all off if it actually works the way I hope it will. But basically this guy bolts in here like so. And then this guy is a clutch pedal. Look at that, boom. Looks a bit ugly at the moment. Trust me, it's gonna look nice and good once we've cleaned it all up and we'll give it a look at paint. That is the theory anyway, but we're gonna go ahead, weld on the last bracket, and then we'll see if my clutch creation actually works. Hey! So the mad scientist things worked, and we officially have a clutch. So good. I will fiddle around with this a little bit and just adjust it to my liking, but the system itself works, so that means I can go ahead and clean it up and make it all amazing. But that is another win in the books, and that is where I have to end it tonight because I have to go home and edit this video. It's gonna be another late upload for you guys, but I'm trying to get as much done as I can in these videos for you guys because I hate uploading videos when not much happens. Still, I think we made some really good progress today. I'm so confident we're gonna be riding this thing by the end of the 12 days of Mike Miss, and it's gonna be such a freaking good reward for us all. Don't forget to leave a comment if you want to win that $50 Autobahn voucher. Thank you guys as always for watching and I'll see you in the next video tomorrow for another day of the 12 days of Mike Miss. You poos. We got a clutch. We can do the clutch kicks now. What up? What up? So do do. Uh, no turbo yet. Bye.